into the capital and the story that goes along with it. This was a, it was a dark time. Innocent people were being killed by, on the whim of a corrupt regime. Those with positions of power and money took what, whatever they pleased. And the common people, the common people were ready for a change. A Messiah, an anointed one, was needed. So Jehu got up and went inside. The prophet Elijah then poured oil on his head and said to him, This is what the Lord, Israel's God, says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people, over Israel. You will strike down your master, Ahab's family. In this way, I will take revenge for the violence done by Jezebel to my servants, the prophets, and to all the Lord's servants. Ahab's whole family will die. This was a different kind of Messiah from a different time, anointed to throw down a corrupt regime. It was a story known by all Jews, the anointing of Jehu and his entry into the capital. Jehu went out to his master's officers. They said to him, is everything okay? Why did this fanatic Elijah come to you? Jehu said to them, you know the man and the nonsense he talks? That's a lie, they said. Come on, tell us. Jehu replied, this is what he said to me. This is what the Lord says. I anoint you king of Israel. Then each man quickly took his cloak and put it beneath Jehu on the paved steps. They blew a trumpet and said, Jehu has become king. Like Jesus, Jehu's followers placed their cloaks on the road in front of him. But these followers have no respect for God or those like Elisha who speak for God. To Jehu, it's all nonsense spoken by religious fanatics. But, you know, they, sometimes these people, they, they figure if they can use religion as a tool to gain power for themselves, well then, okay. The guard standing on the tower at Jezreel saw a crowd of people coming with Jehu. He said, I see a crowd of people. King Joram said, take a chariot driver. Send him out to meet them, to ask, do you come in peace? So the driver went to meet him and said, the king asked, do you come in peace? Jehu replied, what do you care about peace? Come around and follow me. Meanwhile, the tower guard reported. The messenger met with them, but he isn't returning. The king sent a second driver. He came to them and said, the king asked, do you come in peace? Jehu said, what do you care about peace? Come around and follow me. The tower guard reported, the messenger met them, but he isn't returning. And the style of chariot driving is like Jehu, Namishi's son. Jehu drives like a madman. Jehu was a messiah, which means an anointed one. And he was driving a chariot like a madman toward Jezreel, the capital, with his followers falling in around him, and they were going for a purpose. They were going to destroy the corrupt regime of Ahab. Jesus also was a Messiah, a Christ, an anointed one, coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey. And as he and his followers approached the uh, approached the capital, the crowd surrounded him calling out, Hosanna, Hosanna in the name of the highest, which literally means save us now. And it was the days right before the Passover, the festival celebrating freedom from the defeat of a regime that had once enslaved the people of Israel. So the Romans were on edge. 
What they are witnessing as Jesus and his followers are coming toward the capital was a story that they had heard too. This had happened before, and it could happen again. Jehu came to the capital Jezreel, and he shot King Jehoram in the back with an arrow and as, as Joram was running away and, and killed him. And Jehu proceeded to go in. It's a grisly story. But he wiped out everyone associated with the corrupt regime, Jezebel and the rest. One almost got away, as Ahiah, but, but he was wounded, and he died at a place that is known as Armageddon. Jehu was a violent messiah who took power for himself and became king. And this, this is the expected way of the world. We seek whatever power we can to that, that will benefit ourselves, be it money, be it popularity, or some sense of security. We, 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 we seek that power. And those, those who love this kind of power live in constant fear of losing it somehow. And this is what the Romans didn't get. And it's something that Jesus' followers didn't really get either. And I, I think that we're still struggling with this whole thing. Jesus' power is unexpected. Isn't the power of this world. It's not about money. It's not about fame or prestige or weapons. None of that. There is a greater power in this universe. And it's a power that no military can match, it's a power that no nation or empire can match, ideology or religion, none of it. It is the unexpected power of God. It's the power that, that you find when you, like Jesus, have let go of the fear of death. Think about that. How much of your life is dominated by fear. Fear of what people think of you, say about you. Maybe it's the fear of getting sick. Fear of not having enough invested to last through retirement. Jesus' way. Everything that he taught and that he demonstrated the healing, all of the healing that he did, all of the sharing, all of those meals that he shared with all of those thousands of people, and the inclusivity that he showed that he would work and be with anyone. Didn't matter who you were, if you were at the lowest end or if you were part of the enemy army. Did not matter. Jesus' way, all of that, is the antidote to the fear that this world uses to keep you feeling anxious and hoarding, looking out for you and yours. Jesus' way of living is the unexpected power of love to lift the poor up, to get over ourselves and to live passionately and to love faithfully. And the one that can do this, the one that can do this even to the point of no longer fearing death, is free. When Jesus chose to ro ride the donkey into the capital, he was signaling that he comes in a different way, a way that prophets had once predicted, with a different and unexpected kind of power. Now today, you're at the parade. You've seen, you've seen it. You've seen the power of this world driving like a madman, telling, it, telling and taking whatever power it can to benefit themselves and theirs. And you've been tempted by this power. 
And today, I proclaim to you the unexpected power of God. It's the power of love that compels us to share so that there are none in need. It is the power of a humble love that comes to save us from our sins and from our fear. So the question for you as you're at the parade today is where are you at? What path are you following? What do you trust? The way of Jehu or the way of Jesus? Where do you put your trust in the future? Now, unlike Jehu, Jesus did not disregard a religious path. And even when Jesus disagreed with other religious leaders, he never sought to harm them, ever. The stories in the scriptures became a guiding light. The Torah was a guiding light to Jesus. And we know that the Psalms were dear to him. They're, they're interwoven with the things that he says throughout the, week, the last week of his life. And today, as we take our place at the parade of powers, I invite you right now to close your eyes, if you feel comfortable doing that, and deeply and prayerfully listen to the words of the 118th Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, because God is good, because God faithful God's faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. Let the house of Aaron say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. Let those who honor the Lord say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. In tight circumstances, I cried out to the Lord. The Lord answered me with wide open spaces. The Lord is for me. I won't be afraid. What can anyone do to me? The Lord is for me as my helper. I look in victory on those who hate me. It's far better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust any human. The power of Jesus' way. Empires have risen and fallen, but the power of Jesus' way continues to this very day. And all those who truly embrace the unexpected power of love, even to the point that sin and death have no power over them. Those people, such a one, has become good news to the world. Even the power of one such person, one person, can be the change that helps save. So be such a person. Be that person. Let go of the fear and live free. This is the vast, unmeasured power of the love of Jesus. And as our parade continues, let's ride, rise together and sing in hope that lifts all, no matter how difficult the future may be. Please rise.